911 systems here with the command alert controller, also known as the command alert three. This unit here is designed to be interfaced into a public safety radio uh, system, uh, either with a mobile radio or through your dispatch console, um, however your radio um, department interfaces it. This unit uh, can encode single tone, two tone, DTMF uh, tones, uh, can play audio files um, and alert sounds uh, through your radio system by the press of a button. Each button can be configured to um, like macros, so you can have a two-tone set, an audio file, then DTMF tones all on one button press. You can do high-low tones, long tones, beeping tones. It has a... Um, it has a feature for a channel marker, so when there's an emergency on the channel to let other users that may be coming onto the channel know not to transmit by pressing both of these buttons down. It, it's kind of a, a one and done uh, encoder, tone encoder, um, or alert device, uh, depending on the situation um, that you're using it for. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that being said, it does have four buttons. You can uh, have each button programmed to do a separate task, or you can have this button as your engage button. So you'd have to press and hold to activate each individual button here. That's like a safety, so you can't accidentally hit one button and set off an alert tone over your radio system. Um, the Command Alert 3 is programmable by computer, so you would plug it into your computer to program all of your sh your uh, strings into it, so your two-tone, single-tone, or DTMS strings. You can do multiple two-tone sets per button press. You can do a two-tone, a long-tone, an audio file, and a DTMF set with one button press. It, it's it's uh, scalable. Um, and it's pretty uh, user-friendly to program. So as you can see, if I show you the back here, you have the programming port. You have the tone gain, which is the volume control for how loud or uh, low the volume would be for your tone generations, which is your two-tone, DTMF, and single tones. And then um, you have the MP3, which is going to be the audio that would be on your SD card. So if you needed you know, to make the volume um, adjustments to have everything match up and get your levels right, you can adjust those here with a straight slot uh, screwdriver. And then over here is your radio port. So this is an eight, uh, eight position jack. This is a, an RJ45 connector. We use four of the eight uh, connections in this uh, plug to get Two of them are for power and ground, so you have 12 volt positive and your ground connection, and then you have a push to talk trigger, which keys the radio, and then you have the audio um, that comes out of this that goes into your mic audio on your accessory port on your uh, public safety radio. Now the other four, um, the other four connections are parallel buttons, uh, parallel connections for your buttons, so you can have remote buttons to this um, or you can interface it into like a console where the console can actually trigger the device uh, remotely um, you know through the the four um, inputs you know in, uh, button one through four triggers on the back that's that's ran uh, parallel with the buttons on the front I know I'm, I'm kind of not explaining it very well it's it's late. I just wanted to do this video and uh, get it up on the website. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually connect this. And, and this is a cable for a Harris radio. This is a 44-pin um, cable. This would go for your Harris. Um, this is an XG75. So this has the 44-pin accessory connector on the back. So what we do here is it's pretty straightforward. You just have to... plug this into the 44 pin connector on the back of the radio and then the other side would plug into the back here <laughs>
So as you can see, the light comes on there once it's plugged in. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a quick uh, demonstration here. You can see we're both on the same channel. As you can see there, that was a high low tone that was set to go off for 20 reputations. Um, we have a, a beeping tone set up on here as well. And then I'm gonna show you the channel marker function. This is like a marker if there's an emergency or something on the channel, um, you can mark it by pressing the blue and the green together. And what'll happen is you'll see the red light start flashing rapidly. So the red flashing light lets you know that it's in channel marker mode. This particular channel marker we have set up to, we have set up for a, I believe a 550 Hertz tone every 10 seconds for a half a second. And it'll keep doing that until you reset it or it times out. I believe the timeout is set for 10 minutes <clears throat> on this on this setup. To cancel it out, you would just simply um, either press and hold the red and the green, which will cancel it. Another option for canceling is you can actually do a different activation. If you, you do that activation then it's gonna turn off the channel marker feature. And all these are programmable in the uh, terminal program and it's, it's pretty straightforward. So we do have another video available that will be coming out shortly that shows how to program this unit. Um, and uh, you know, this is really designed for like out in the field, a command officer, a chief officer who needs to have the ability to do evacuation tones and mayday calls or, uh, you know, just a long tone to get people's attention on the fire ground. Another good use for this is a small, like a small agency that doesn't necessarily have dispatch consoles, but wants the ability to transmit page tones to activate the volunteer fire department's pagers or tornado sirens. Um, the possibilities are pretty much endless. You just, uh, you know, it's completely programmable to whatever you need it to do. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below or, or uh, send us a message through our website. Thanks for watching. And this is the Command Alert 3. Have a good evening.